Beneath my soul Words can't exist Yet I believe Without risk Underneath my soul Where I can't hide I find my God inside In my soul Down underneath I am love And I know From my soul Down underneath Come the seeds I sow Good morning. How y'all doing? Awesome. Me too. Please join me for a moment of prayer. Loving God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart find themselves to be holy, 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 and acceptable in thy sight, for you are my God, my rock, and my redeemer. Amen. And so it is. So this morning, we're going to talk about technical difficulties. How many of you have a cell phone, a tablet, a car that requires some sort of connection to other things, a good old-fashioned TV, dare I say a VCR or a DVD player? I've even gone so far in my own home as I have various and sundry devices that will tell me what time and temperature it is anywhere in the world as long as I can pronounce it. <laughs> it will turn the lights on and off for me. My family thinks I've lost my mind because they're like, are the light switches really that far away? <laughs> I was like, nah. I just like being able to use technology as a way to make my life a little bit easier. But technology itself does not always lend to making our lives a little bit easier. Amen. So technical difficulties, this is the basis of a project that I've been working on now for a while that kind of looks at the overlap of those points of intersection between technology and how we use it and our spiritual journeys. Now, most of you know that I work in the technology field, and more often than not, I'm working with something that broke. <laughs> and that's fun sometimes, only when you know how to fix it. So Reverend Rose and I had a chance to spend a little bit of time together this week at the Southeast Unity Regional Conference. And at one point, I kind of cruised by, and she's like, Kathy, give me a theme. I was like, oh, my God, I gave you a talk title. Isn't that enough? <laughs> and I sat, and I thought, and I thought, and I thought. And I remembered a quote by Stephen Covey. And that quote says, the way that we see the problem is the problem. That was what I said the first time I heard it, too. Huh. <laughs> and off and on for the past month or so, I've been kind of working with Emily Cady's Lessons in Truth. And there is a point that she says this. Now, this is a long one, so hang in there with me. It says, when you've done any piece of work incorrectly, the first step toward getting it right is to undo the wrong and begin again from that point. We have believed wrong about God and about ourselves. We have believed that God at some point was angry with us and that we were sinners who ought to be afraid of God. We have believed that sickness and poverty and every other trouble is evil and put upon us as a way of torturing us in some way to either trick us into serving or loving God. We have believed that we have pleased God best when we become so absolutely subdued by our troubles as to be patiently submissive to them all not even trying to rise out of them or overcome them. And she says this, all of this is false, entirely false. As my nephew would say, lies, all lies. <laughs> Our focus statement this morning is this, and the first step toward freeing ourselves from our troubles is to get rid of our erroneous beliefs about God and ourselves. So here is what happened to me. I was driving to Ocala for a meeting, and a friend of mine called. And she gave me permission to share this story, by the way. She called, and she said to me, she said, you know, between work and school and home and stuff and broke stuff and just life, I don't have a lot of time. 
I don't have a lot of time to connect and have meaningful conversations with my friends in ways that really support my journey. And I thought to myself as I listened, and she paused for a moment, I said to her, I said, how can I support you in this process? What can I do to help you along the way? And the call cut off. And I thought to myself, way to go, God. Here I am in a situation with a person who just probably needs somebody to listen, and my phone cuts off. And I thought to myself, she's probably angry, pissed off, disappointed, irritated, and put out with me, thinking that maybe I didn't have enough time to listen to her. And now I'm like every other friend that has come her way. So here we are. The dictionary defines technical difficulties as those unforeseen equipment problems, such as hardware failures, software bugs, and things that make it difficult or impossible to perform a desired action. My loose translation of this is stuff that gets in my way when I'm trying to do good in the world. That is a technical difficulty. If we have some cell phone, some something that causes us problems along the way. Now, is there anybody in here who has never had a technical difficulty with their phone, their tablet, their TV, their car? That's what I thought. Good, I have found my people. <laughs> now, what came to mind for me when I started to think about this is like, how do I talk about this on a Sunday morning without wigging people out? And what came to me is a passage from the Gospel of Matthew, the seventh chapter, the seventh and eighth verse. It says, to just ask and it will be given to you. Seek after it and you will find. Continue to knock and the door will be opened for you. All who ask receive. Those who seek find what they seek, and those who knock will have their door open. This passage is kind of cool for me because I could have just stayed in that space of making up my own story about what I thought she was thinking about me. This passage does not let us stay stagnant in our thought process. If we ask, then we can receive. So we don't have to stop at the point of the need that we can trust God for the blessing beyond the thing that we are asking for. That we don't have to stop at the point of, I can't find my car keys if I know I got to go somewhere, and God, this is not serving us if I can't find my keys, which happened this morning, which is probably why it's good to have a spare set and be able to find those. But if we are not willing to truly see ourselves in our lives in any moment beyond the problem that we have encountered, what are we doing in the world? Are we just kind of sitting around hanging out like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh? Woe is me. Are we sitting in a space where we will accept that less than limited way of life and again, woe is me? Or are we willing to lean forward, take one step forward out of our situation and move into the blessing that already has our name on it? You see, we could stop at finding the needs in our lives and staying only at that point of need. But the master teacher teaches us this and says that if there is a way that takes us beyond the technical difficulty and into the truth of a spiritual solution that supports our soul's way forward, why wouldn't we take it? Or do we think that having a negative story is a better story to tell? I've told you all about my eating proclivities, whereby I eat like a six-year-old, so going out to lunch with me is a challenge and an adventure. And in deciding what we were going to eat one day, a friend, we decided on a restaurant, and a friend of ours, she just kind of went off on a tangent about how terrible the service was, how bad the food was, how every time she goes in there, she has a rough interaction. She talked about that thing like it happened yesterday. Later on, when I asked her how long ago was that, she said about seven years. So you see how those negative stories will stay with us, and we will tell them as though they are our God-given truth. What I have learned about the use of cell phone technology, I have to revert back to something my mother would always say. Jesus is on the main line. Just tell him what you want. Jesus is on the main line. Just call him up and tell him what you want. So in the face of technical difficulties, be willing to ask and trust that it will be given. 
The next one is to seek it and you will find. To seek is an attempt to locate. It's easy in our lives to misplace or lose something and just replace it or choose to live without it. But we are called to move by faith in a way that allows that experience of finding to be a blessing. Because often when I lose something in my life, I find other stuff that I didn't know was lost (laughs) in the process of looking for the thing in which I lost. I have learned nowadays to trust my GPS every now and then when it takes me off course in the way that I go, because every now and then it'll take me by something that I'm probably going to need to know where that is in the next couple of weeks. So I've learned to trust in the journey. There's a song that comes to mind that says, we've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in God's holy word, and oh, I can't turn around because I've come this far by faith. The next piece of that passage says to, and I I really, really, really like this one. It says to continue to knock and the door will be open to you. I love the way it's stated to continue to knock. So we've already been knocking and trying to figure out what's up. But to continue to knock, that in itself is an act of faith. In other words, keep at it. Don't give up. Don't turn and walk away. Keep knocking at the door of your truth because you are home. It's one thing to pull up to someone's house You see their car, the light is on, you can smell dinner, and you start knocking and you wonder why nobody's answering the door. Maybe because they only have food for one, who knows? But what is happening is that the divine is knocking at the door of our heart and of our soul, and the divine in us will just keep on keeping on. We'll continue to knock. There was a song that I taught you all last year that says that we are opening up to the sweet surrender, to the luminous love light of the one. That we are opening up, we are opening up. So beloved, when you feel overwhelmed by technical difficulties and your best guess action is to turn and walk away, continue to knock because the door will be open. You see, technical difficulties, I don't believe that they were ever really meant to cause us to just stop in our tracks, to hold us hostage or to hold us prisoner or to hold us back because we were created to be unlimited in every facet of that idea. I think in a spiritual context that, spiritual, that technical difficulties are reminders of the truth that our soul has always known. Our soul has always known that the question and the answer are in the same room. Our soul has always known that nothing is ever truly lost in the universe. Our soul always knows that we're home and that at some point we can open up to the sweet surrender of the luminous love light of the one. When technical difficulties arise, be willing to press the backspace key, to click undo, to reboot, to try again, to love again, to live again, to thrive again, because it's right there waiting for you. Emily Cady says that the first step towards freeing ourselves from our troubles is to get rid of those false beliefs that we have about God and ourselves. We overcome and we find our freedom by being willing to ask, willing to seek, and to continue to knock. So back to my story, my friends, about the abrupt ending to the telephone call. I called my friend back um, about a week or so later just to check in to make sure that she and I were good. And she said to me, she said, you know, I love you like nobody else in the world. It wasn't that I was mad or that I was disappointed. I just dropped my phone in the toilet. (laughs) So therein, my friends, The truth is far more valuable than the story that we make up. I'm glad I kept asking that I continue to seek and that I was willing to continue to knock because I could have gone on with that story that was going on in my head, but now I know the truth is that there were some technical difficulties in that place. 
So Unity of Merritt Island, this concludes my time with you. And know that I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. <laughs>